or let's say for instance, if you do a human design, right? A human design reading or like an astrology reading, you'll go into it based on where you are, like what you want to learn and what you want to focus on. And you'll see that and you'll hear that and you'll be able to regurgitate that. And then you might come back to it like a month later and think to yourself like, oh my God, I totally like didn't even hear that other part that they were talking about. It's just because that's not where your strategy, your strategic focus is. But when that's pointing to the right, you know, those people tend to be people that don't do well taking tests, memorizing information. It's like they are better at seeing the whole big picture versus all those like logical steps. So like what you described is totally in your design. And, and when people know that about themselves, then they don't, like you said, they don't have to judge or make themselves wrong. Yeah. And like, you know, as you talked about, like, I, I know my husband has sacral energy. He is go, go, go nonstop. And I'm like, everybody around him is exhausted and he just continues to add new things to his to-do list. Um, and, and it's incredible in that way. And so, and I'm like, I need to constantly, I'm also go, go, go. I don't really give myself that time to rest, but I'm constantly needing to have, like meditate, like if I don't meditate and I'm going to burn out because that's my rest, even though I can get it in short spurts or lie down with my two-year-old or get body work or do, you know, I'm constantly doing healing things because I just, I need that restorative, um, you know, to fill my tank because I'm just going, going, going. So it's just so, this feedback is really brilliant because not only can you um, understand yourself more in the way you operate and give yourself more grace or like more confidence, you know, in some of the things and the ways you do things. Cause you're like, Oh, well, that's just who I am. That's how I do it. Yeah. Uh, but you can also have more grace and, and learn how to even like doing your children or your husband, like learn how to communicate with them because you know, that they don't learn the same way as you or whatever. So it's really, this is really fascinating. I have seen, I have had several clients that were like married for, you know, 40, 50 years and just kind of like at that brink of like, do I really want to be unhappily married for these last 10 years of my life? I think I need to end this. And then they learn about their human design. They learn about their partner's human design and it completely changes the relationship because there's just this, this, un, this deeper understanding of, oh my gosh, you know, my partner has not been trying to be annoying or they haven't had unresolved trauma. It's like, they literally are just different than me and they do things very differently than me and they have a different energy that's moving through them. Like you said, it just gives people a lot of compassion and grace, I think for themselves and for others. Yeah. yeah. Amazing. What are the common challenges you're seeing with your clients right now and yeah. how are you helping them work through it right now? Like in particular right now, uh, I would say in general, I tend to have a lot of people that have built successful lives and they're still not feeling happy. They're still like, they're still looking for something. They're still wondering like, what is my purpose? Or they had a long stretch of feeling very fulfilled by that career or that, you know, that life that they had built. And then they start feeling like there's, there's something more, you know, it's like those three questions of who am I really, what am I doing here? And how can I do it in a way that contributes to society? And that also allows me to like, take care of myself and my family. Um, I definitely find a lot of people are just asking that question. And I think like that's popping more and more and more. And, and when people breathe that, really opens up that portal of what am I doing here? Like truly, like, am I really doing what I'm supposed to be doing here? And a lot of times people stay with what they're doing. It's just the frequency of how they're doing it totally changes, you know, the way that they're relating to themselves and the way they're relating to their life and their responsibilities, that's what shifts. And then other people make transitions and they, they change. I would also say a lot of people come to me um, feeling like they have trauma and they either have an understanding of it or 
they've done, you know, they've done some work around it, but they're still like just noticing the same patterns. They're noticing themselves like still engaged in the same thing. Um, just maybe a different picture or a different person or a different job, a different situation. And they really want to like shift that once and for all. Um, and then I would also say a lot of women come to me feeling like they, they, they know there's more power and they know there's more light inside of them. So it's not just like a purpose thing. It's more of like, I know I have gifts inside of me and I've, I've kept them quiet, right? Or I've been afraid of them, or I'm just afraid in general of like, if I open this box, like, because it's so unknown and I, I don't know if I'll still be normal, if I'll still have a normal life. Like, I think a lot of people are very curious about this type of work, but I think they're also kind of scared that they're going to like end up going crazy or they're going to end up like feeling like they need to leave their life and go live in an ashram, you know? And I think, I think a lot of people maybe are attracted to me because I'm very mired in human life, you know, like I'm a mom, a single mom. I have two small children. I, they, they have two dads. Like <laughs> there's a lot of, you know, like, you know what that's like. There's a lot of <laughs> managing, right? I mean, there's a lot of managing human life, but there's also this just un like believable. It's like undescribable feeling that is possible to live and to feel and to embody, even when you're paying bills and you're are you know you're arguing with a co-parent <laughs> and you're you know you're being a single parent. Like there's just this magic that is totally available, and I think. I think that's what people are looking for. I think that's what people are looking for when they're doing plant ceremonies, when they're doing mushroom ceremonies, when they're like wanting to just check out and rebel, you know, mm -hmm. they're looking for that magic, like, like not just fleeting experiences of that magic, but like really how to live from that place as a human to live in that magic. Thank you for listening to The Heal Podcast. Be sure to tune in for more empowering wisdom and inspiring healing stories. Oh, and make sure you hit the follow button on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts so you don't miss that one episode that holds the answer you've been searching for. And if you feel inspired, we would love you to rate and review us so that we have the opportunity to reach more people. And of course, you can follow us on Instagram for some behind the scenes fun and more inspiration at at Heal Documentary and at Kelly Gore. Thank you so much and be well.